On my view, yeah, there there is a close connection between meaningful libertarian free will and a, and a workable moral argument. What do you think, Dave? Uh, with with objective moral values and duties in mind, does it even make sense to offer the moral argument if one believes that God causally determines all thoughts, uh, all beliefs, all actions, all behaviors, all the time, and thus no human ever possesses an opportunity to think or act otherwise. Does that make sense? Well, I, I think it, I think it does. You know, I, I've been trying really hard for years not to pick fights with, uh, with my Calvinist friends. Cause I used to do that all the time. It made me very <laughs> unpopular. And uh, I appreciate your forcing my hand to, to talk about this. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I know, I know our Calvinist friends disagree with us and, and all, but yeah, if you're just asking for my own opinion, right, right here and right now, uh, yeah, my, my view is very similar that, that if, if you're, if you're a thoroughgoing Calvinist and the only freedom that you really believe in is a sort of compatibilist freedom, according to which, you know, we do what we want to do or something like that, but you couldn't do otherwise. Mm-hmm. Then it seems to me that, that the gospel is not very good news. Um, for the the non-elect, because um, they it's not like they, you know, on me, my view that, that they freely reject the gospel, they invariably re- reject it. They couldn't do otherwise. Now that's based on my analysis of freedom as a libertarian, like you, though. Mm-hmm. And of course, they would just say, "Well, you know, we believe in a different kind of freedom." My thinking on that is uh, maybe doing what you want to do is necessary for uh, freedom, but it's it's not sufficient. Surely, it's not sufficient. Right. And I think there are all sorts of thought examples that, that illustrate that with perfect clarity. Well, so on my view, uh, we do need God's grace, right? So we don't have the kind of libertarian freedom that's, uh, you know, Pelagian or semi-Pelagian or anything like that. Right. We, right? we do need God's grace. Yes. And, and that, of course, is, is a, a common misunderstanding of this sort of uh, affirmation of libertarian freedom, that it somehow um, vitiates the need for God's grace. And that's not our position at all. No, we need God's grace. Like we were talking about before, we need God's grace to be forgiven and to be changed and to be transformed and to be perfected. And ultimately that perfection is going to be the deepest sort of freedom that there is of all, right? Freedom yeah. from, from sin itself. So uh, on my view, um, yeah, there, there is a close connection between meaningful libertarian free will and a, and a workable moral argument. If I were giving the moral argument as a, as a Calvinist to myself, <laughs> I would be all conflicted. Uh, yeah. But in response to myself, I would say, so can you explain again, you know, your view on, on God's grace and why exactly the gospel is good news here? Because if someone is outside of that group, that's going to be conferred God's effectual grace. There is no way that they can accept the offer of salvation. Right. Yeah. So it, it's not good news for them. I mean, and in fact, Hell isn't even tragic for them, I think, on a Calvinist view. I mean, it's just what God intends. Right. Uh, the, the only way to avoid that, it seems to me, is for folks uh, just to sort of speak outside of, uh, uh, you know, out of both sides of their, their mouth at the same time. You know, like, well, God's genuinely offering them this, this possibility. But look, if your hands are tied behind your back and I offer you something, and I say, look, I'm offering it to you, take it. You know, and you're like, I can't, my hands are tied behind my back. I'm like, hey, whatever, I offered it. <laughs> it wasn't a genuine offer, it seems to me. So, um, so yeah, I think that I think that some people who haven't thought about this as much as they should gravitate toward Calvinism simply because they think that this is the position that you need to take once you recognize our radical need for God's grace. Yeah. And that's a mistake. Mm-hmm. Yes, we need God's grace, but that does not mean that you need to embrace a compatibilist uh, and Calvinist view of these matters. And in fact, it seems to me, uh, yeah, it, it raises serious questions about God's nature, God's love, God's goodness. It raises a serious question uh, of if God is the author of sin. And uh, the moral argument, it seems to me, is, is really difficult to advance in that sort of uh, context. And I also think it makes the problem of evil intractable. 